Very excited to be speaking today to Marcos Dinnerstein. And uh, Marcos, why don't you uh, just give the audience a little bit of background on yourself and um, what you're currently working on, as well as uh, where you come from, uh, what your expertise is in. Um, I think everyone listening would love to learn more about you. Okay, yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Marcos Dinnerstein or Dinnerstein, depends on who you ask in my family. We, we've got to debate on that. And uh, right now I'm uh, doing a number of things. I am working, doing business development for SAM.AI, a platform that uh, principally is a way to facilitate warm introductions between high value people for their mutual benefit. It's a non-intrusive, it's a very privacy focused, um, but it, it, it does two things. It uh, lets you know who you know in a structured way. So you, you've got this mushel of contacts, this mushel of history of emails. Sam takes it in and structures that data so it's searchable. So it's actually way, way more useful as well. It, it uh, also uh, enriches that data with affinity, affinity data, uh, publicly available stuff on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and makes that data more powerful. And then the uh, other aspect is when people join your SAM network, and it doesn't have to be a large number of people, three, five, if they're well connected, you can now see who they know. Uh, again, non-intrusively, just name, title, company. And if it's an appropriate match, you can ask for an introduction. Uh, super valuable business intelligence tool. So I'm doing uh, both content for them and business development. Uh, it's an interest, it, it, it's a startup, so it's, it's a fun ride as all startups are. Uh, so I'm enjoying that. Let's see, what else am I doing? I am, uh, I have my weekly newsletter called A Better Mousetrap, which is uh, events and opportunities for founders in the New York area, principally. And I've been doing that for a number of years. It's an outgrowth of what I used to do as the editor of digital.nyc, which I did for two and a half years. Uh, Digital Down in NYC is New York City's official tech and startup website. It's a public private partnership between, or as a writer should say, among, because it's more than two entities, among the uh, mayor's office, uh, the uh, NYC uh, Economic Development Corporation, and it had been owned by Gust, uh, which recently uh, sold it and it has a new owner. So it's, it's a public-private partnership, um, and uh, hopefully it will restart again at some point. It's kind of a you know, dormant state, uh, and I was uh, running that. And I'm also doing, uh, in my spare time, uh, working with a company called Three Links, which is a, a supply chain company, and I'm doing video interviews for them, for people in the supply chain world. Uh, um, I've already gotten uh, two in the can, and hopefully getting another another one in, uh, in the next week or so. And that, that's been a lot of fun. The, the focus on that one is not just as an, a, a regular old, uh, let's interview a founder, you know, and, and, and hear their hero's journey and uh, other uh, Joseph Campbell type <laughs> sagas. What it is, is we're, we're trying to interview and, and thereby encourage um, more socially focused, more community focused companies, companies who have a greater number of stakeholders than uh, companies have in recent history. So it's, it's not just uh, returning the greatest investment to your, uh, your investors. It's also a uh, being beholden and concerning the uh, taking into consideration the needs of your customer, the needs of your wider community, the needs of your workers. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a broader set of stakeholders and we're trying to both be that, uh, three links, and also uh, highlight those people who are doing it and, and talking about those concerns and those, those issues, culture, building community. Uh, and that's a fun, that's a fun journey. I mean, that's, uh, I like that kind of stuff. Those are my 
ethics. So exploring that and encouraging that is, is a joy. Great. Yeah. It's so interesting to hear all the irons you have in the fire. Um, and I've looked into a lot of the companies that uh, Marcus is working with currently, um, a bunch of really interesting projects, and uh, we'll include links to all of them um, in the show notes um, for this conversation. Um, but interestingly, uh, my co-founder and I, Addy, uh, actually met Marcus at a New York City uh, startup-related event originally, and uh, we were really interested to hear that he had been working for Digital.NYC in the past, which actually showed up a lot um, in our research when we were actually beginning work on Started Up NYC and uh, kind of brainstorming ways that we could help get innovative startups out into the forefront and um, do a lot of that content work as well as the, the innovation consulting. So it was one of those very small world moments. Um, yeah. But yeah, Marcus has been involved in, in this space for quite a long time and uh, his, his newsletter, Better Mousetrap, is is really widely read by people in the industry. So definitely encourage people to, to go and check that out. But um, Marcus, you have a really extensive experience um, working on content, particularly web content. And so I'd love to just get your thoughts uh, more generally on what it is that makes good web content in your point of view and uh, a few things that people could uh, focus on when publishing content for the web. Okay. Uh, well, it's a, it's a big question. Uh, yeah. There are, there are lots of lots of facets to that answer. So let me just uh, dive in uh, broadly, and then we can narrow Definitely. it down. And then you can shut me down if I talk too long. Uh, uh, please. Web content has to be all content uh, has to be interesting. Um, and I'm all, I, I'm actually starting to rebel against uh, a little bit against the the term content because it's a commodification commodification of writing of um, audio or or video interviewing or presentations and by calling it content you're reducing it to its most abstract, uh, generic quality. And so one of the things that, again, to embody, embody that, uh, it makes more sense to me to talk about what's good writing uh, on the web and in what context? Is it business writing? Is it uh, blogging, journaling? Um, and the, the the cardinal rule is be interesting. And to be interesting, you have to bring something um, either new and or a new take on that content. You have to know who your audience is so that you, you meet them in a place where they can take in what you're saying. Um, you know, I'll, I'll read stuff on, on blockchain, say on, on Coindesk, which is a, it's a major, uh, very reputable blockchain publication. They're speaking to a, by and large, a very educated audience who understand the concepts of blockchain, of cryptocurrencies, of trading. So they don't have to backtrack and give basic information that can be assumed. They know their audience and they're writing to that audience. Uh, so that they, by and large, uh, partly they're real journalists there. <laughs> um, they know how to write uh, about the blockchain and then the cryptocurrency space and the distributed ledger space. Uh, so that's one thing is be interesting, know your audience. Um, and very important, respect your audience's time. And by that, I mean, don't just write something and go, okay, I'm going to do 500 to 750 words. I've done that. Um, you know, grammar, Grammarly checked it over. It didn't flag anything. Funky. Publish. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's your first draft. 
Now, how much can you remove and still have value? Um, is, the, is the content written in such a way that it's compelling? Why should they read the next sentence? You have to earn that. Uh, you know, and, and hold yourself, you know, not, you know, not everything is going to be a masterpiece. Don't get me wrong. Uh, don't let the, the perfect be the enemy of the good. You know, we got to crank out stuff often. But still, you don't want to just put stuff, throw stuff out there and go, it's good enough, because your audience is not going to be fools. They're going to they're re read it and go, oh, man, he's just going on. Instead of putting a period here, they just went, and I did this owing to the fact that that, and because of this, and I see that kind of writing all the time, and it just drives me nuts, because it's it's getting close to stream of consciousness, <laughs> and yeah. I just want to say, finish your thought, make a new sentence, see what you can condense. So editing is really really crucial, because it means you respect your audience's time and your and the attention that they're bestowing to you. You know they don't have to read your stuff. You know, that's why people click off of websites uh, frequently because people haven't taken the care to really do their best to, to, to make tight writing. I'm going to do a plug for a couple of books that are, I really want. This one to, uh, called Revising Prose, and it's by a guy named Richard Lanham, L-A-N-H-A-M. It is nuts and bolts um, about the craft of writing. Uh, I've got something pinned up on my wall called the paramedic method that he uh, that I photocopied from his uh, his book, which is circle the prepositions, circle the is form, find the action and the actor, put this action in a simple, not compound, active verb. Start fast, no slow windups. Read the passage aloud with emphasis and feeling. Write out each sentence on a blank sheet or sheet of paper and mark off the basic rhythmic units. Mark off the sentence length. That's it. I mean, it may have seemed a little long, but it's, it's eight things. It's eight items. And these, just kind of keeping those things in mind, just those alone will really tighten writing. And that will... Um, that will make for better web content because it's better writing. And that's really ultimately what, what we want. And then the other book uh, it, that just came out recently is by this woman who I really admire, Anne Hansley, H-A-N-D-L-E-Y, called Everybody Writes. She is a um, professional writer and she's worked on big accounts. And you read that book and it just flows. It's very simple writing. It's very direct. You know, some of her instructional stuff is a page long. Here's a rule. Uh, there's nothing extraneous in it. So she's really she's really walking the walk here. Uh, you know, it's it's like uh, you know, you know. She I I admire her greatly, as you can probably tell, um, and. You know, those those two books alone will stand you in good stead. Uh, they're they're great. Um, so, for relating it back to SEO, which you, you'd uh, mentioned to me, I think before we started recording, um, you're 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 acquainted with the rules as well as I of of uh, you know having sufficient number of keywords or key phrases in of having your uh, H2 uh, titles uh, so that the, uh, the search engines understand the structure of what you're writing, uh, putting in a conclusion, uh, and maybe even writing the word in conclusion <laughs> to sum things up. Uh, those, are, those are consistent with easy to read uh, copy or text and they're useful. They're useful for for a reader, um, and that matches up with uh, 
being valued in the SEO. It used to be you would um, uh, keyword pack used to be called uh, and just like throw as many uh, uh, instances of your keyword or your key phrase into and that would increase your uh, your ranking uh, in the uh, uh, results pages. Google and Bing and other search engines have gotten way, way, way more sophisticated uh, than, than that. They give you ranking for length. Uh, I believe you were telling me that long-term content is now uh, valued more. Uh, that seems uh, consistent. Uh, it, does, it does generally have to be the keyword. I, when we spoke about a month ago, I mentioned uh, the concept of latent semantic indexing and uh, like synonyms, essentially, that's a fancy word. I did further research on it and I think I'm dead wrong. I was dead wrong uh, about that, uh, that, that it does not actually uh, let you rank well. So you, have to, you do have to stay pretty consistently with the, uh, the keywords, key phrases. Um, sentence structure, if, if, you, uh, if you have uh, a WordPress uh, site, they often bundle it with, I think it's called Yoast. Yeah, Yoast uh, SEO. Fantastic. Yeah, plugin. Yoast SEO, and it gives you it gives you some nice simple rules that you you uh, and scores you on those for um, effective SEO content. And if you if you kind of adjust your your writing to those rules, you'll see that the uh, sentence structure matters. You know the uh, the complexity of your writing. So you can you can you can actually learn from these free tools. Um, linking uh, is important in, in SEO writing. Uh, if, if we're writing, you know, if we're writing with the purposes of not only being of value to the reader, which I think you should never ever lose sight of, um, but you also want it to have SEO impact, then you want to, if you're writing, uh, of course, you know, nonfiction, <laughs> if business content, then you want to link out to two well-ranking um, third-party sources that support your argument, um, because that tells the uh, the search engine that you are linking to credible. Uh, popular content that has value, that, that readers have, have voted with their eyes uh, as, as validating. And by linking out to it, you have no uh, stake in pumping somebody else's something. So the assumption is that you're, you're also trying to provide value. And they reward you for doing that because that's ultimately what these search engines are, are trying to optimize for, a better user experience. Uh, and then of course, uh, you'll see an every uh, major professional site um, related content. Well, that's just another way of saying, well, I'm going to link internally because I, I, I want the, uh, the value of pointing to my own content. And if it is related, well, then it's a value and you're giving yourself uh, links. So those are, those are some of the principles. Uh, if you can, if you can uh, create original video, that's very uh, that's very valuable uh, and uh, related and embedded in that content. Uh, I did for I don't know maybe maybe a year year and a half. I was writing articles for a translation platform called Moto Word, which is a cute, uh, cute uh, it's a great translation company uh, founded by a couple of Turkish guys. They're wonderful. They're great, uh, crazy, love them, and. Um, what was my point here? Um, yeah, I wrote, I wrote, I don't know, 50, 60 articles for them. And um, losing my train of thought. We're talking here. about uh, internal linking, I believe. Oh, yeah. We, we did lots of internal linking, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in every single article. Um, you know, that was, that was just. Yeah, really uh, important. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, really important to given. And uh, we, we came at talking about translation from 
a zillion angles. Some, uh, some of the fun ones were uh, started by my predecessor in, in, in my role as a content writer. Uh, she started a series of uh, famous translators. So there were a lot of writers uh, over history who've been translators as well. So, you know, doing biographies of uh, Jorge Luis Borges, a famous Argentinian writer. Um, he, he was uh, raised bilingual English and Spanish. And so, you know, you get to write a biography of him and point out his interesting works or, uh, you know, so there, there, there are ways to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Here's thank you so much. Those are some amazing tips. I mean, I love your distinction between content as a term and good writing. I think that's something that is super important that people need to keep in mind. Um, love your focus on the importance of editing. I think that's something that really gets lost, especially with a lot of these crowdsourced platforms like Fiverr and Upwork. Um, editing is key, and you need to yeah, and, incorporate and we're that under as the part gun. of your process, part of your creative process. You know, as a, as a client yeah. that is that is receiving content, you need to make sure that the quality uh, of that content is there, and that first and foremost, the writing is good. And it's only at that point that you can focus on some of the more technical goals that you were talking about as well, like building a backlinking strategy, incorporating those external and internal links, making sure to do the technical SEO on the web page to provide all the metadata that Google needs in order to rank that page effectively. And yeah, I mean, your, your work um, for uh, the translation company is particularly interesting as well because it, it touches on um, some concepts of in, international SEO, which is- Oh yeah, that's really, very that's really important. Field. Yes. Yeah, very, very technical and um, something that's really important because people are consuming content in, in a bunch of different languages across the web. and. Google's also ranking that content and ranking different uh, content in, in certain languages. So that metadata also needs to be provided in those requisite languages sure. if appropriate or specifically sure. not provided if you only want people to be reading your content in, in one language. Um, so, Which is I mean, leaving money on the table typically. Because uh -huh. if, if, if you, uh, I mean, really any company that's on the web is international. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Very good point. you know, it, it, it if if they if a customer a potential customer can buy from you from another country, you should give serious thought to to translating it. Uh, mm -hmm. In in my research for a lot of these articles, uh, time after time I would see that countries in which uh, there's a a large English speaking population, like the Netherlands, just about everybody speaks English there. Still. They purchase in Dutch. So if you translate your site into Dutch, they, the uh, conversion rate is way, way higher because it, you know, you're meeting them in their language. Absolutely. You know, and that's just a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're creating a comfort level there. Uh, Definitely. A sense I'm of sure familiarity. The same thing would be, Definitely. Yeah. I'm sure the same thing would be true in Finland. Uh, I, I went to Helsinki, I don't know, about five year, four or five years ago for the Slush conference. And I was blown away that every cab driver, everybody just said, hey, dude, how are you? In, in, in vernacular English. I'm like, oh, yeah. the, the U.S. is so behind. <laughs> true. Scandinavia is... Uh pretty amazing in terms of their, their English speaking ability. But yeah, I mean, what you're saying also goes right back to readability. Um, you know, yeah. just because someone can read your content in a non-native language doesn't mean that it's going to be as effective. And um, all those things are very, very important. Um, and then that the also gets on the point of view the, as well. The, the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That also gets to touches on the point of localization yes. versus just pure translation. So mm -hmm. if you've got an article with, uh, you know, blonde haired, blue eyed people in the illustration, well, if you translate it for uh, Mexico or Latin America, you better think long and hard before you put the blonde haired and blue eyed people in there. You might want to, you know, to, to, mm -hmm. to change up the, uh, the graphics. Absolutely. And yeah. certain expressions, expressions don't translate. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah. Um, 
This has been so helpful. Um, thank you so much for, for touching on all these different spheres. Um, sure. You are someone that is, it's great to speak to a person with your depth of experience. You know, you, you've been in this game for a very long time and uh, you've also kept up with how the rules have changed, uh, which is really important because as you were saying, there were a bunch of black hat SEO strategies uh, back in the day that uh, actually did produce results, but um, as you mentioned, for a little uh, while and, and then they got banned. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know you can also be um, penalized for using a lot of those strategies today. So it can can very often be counterproductive if uh, if Google or another search engine detects that you're up to this sort of thing, which is they're getting better and better at doing. Um, you could have some very negative effects as well. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. But no, no more, no, no more white font on a white background. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a crazy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That, that, that got shot down pretty early, actually. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Marcos, thank you so much for your time. Um, really quick, before we start to wrap up here, um, where can people connect with you um, and kind of learn more what you're up to? We'll, we'll provide a few relevant links in, in the description for this video, but um, where can people get in touch? Well, the, you can always just uh, hit me directly at uh, marcos.dinnerstein at gmail.com or uh, marcos at bettermousetrap.nyc mm -hmm. if you don't want to learn how to spell my last name. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's I, I'm, I'm uh, Twitter uh, at Marcos D. Okay. Great. That yeah. Do. And, and like I said, um, Marcus's um, newsletter provides a lot of value. So definitely recommend anyone that's involved in the startup or innovation consulting space, check out a better mousetrap. Um, there, there's a lot of value there. So um, Marcos, very, very uh, kind, thanks thank again. You. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thanks again for, for your time. And um, I'll let you go for now. And hopefully this, this will be the first of uh, many conversations to follow. Um, that would be fun. Yes. Have a great rest of your night over there. Thank you. Take care. Take care.